cricket, the second most popular sport right after football. It is very popular in former British colonies, especially India and Pakistan, which will be our two subjects for today. It has helped shape 70 years of relations between the two countries, and even a term cricket diplomacy has been coined by former Pakistani President General Mohammed Zial al Haq. Similarly to sports diplomacy, it is used to strengthen the ties between two cricket playing nations. Our main case will be the 2004 Indian cricket tour in Pakistan. But before we get to that, let's talk a bit about background information. The rivalry between India and Pakistan dates back to 1947, when Pakistan was carved out of India on religious grounds by the Muslim majority there, gaining independence both from India itself and the British who ruled the area way before that. The partition and ensuing conflicts led to hate, prejudices, and insecurities between the two nations. This created many unresolved conflicts. One of which was the Kashmir territorial dispute between India and Pakistan, which after 73 years of peacekeeping missions and many entries in forums like the United Nations has still been unresolved. Cricket was the turning point in this rivalry. After gaining independence in 47, Pakistan appeared on the Imperial Cricket Conference timeline. In 1952, they had their first test series against India and the competitive spirit grew between the two as they played many more matches together. Still, it was too early to call it cricket diplomacy, especially considering that hockey was the more popular sport in both countries. However, two notable wars disrupted this healthy cricket competition. The first was the Kashmir War of 1965. And the second was the Bangladesh Independence War of 1971, in which both Pakistan and India participated, however, on opposite sides. Not a single sports or cricket match was played between the two countries until 1978, which ended a 17-year-long hiatus. Despite some reportedly biased umpiring against India, cricket was still warming up the relations between the two. It went so far that in 1978, India's Prime Minister Moraji Desai demanded that one of India's intelligence agencies cease all actions in Pakistan. He was awarded, as a gesture of goodwill, the highest Pakistani civil award, the Nishan e Pakistan. Still, things weren't quite so simple. In 1986, India conducted Operation Brass Tax along the border, and in 1990, they also conducted nuclear tests, after which Pakistan did their own. Finally, in 1998, under close watch of the United States administration, the Pakistani Prime Minister and Indian President met in New York. Pakistan would tour in India the following year, which was received very warmly by the locals. Unfortunately, only three months after that, would Pakistan fight on the Kashmir issue, starting the Kurgil conflict. Nearly all peace was disrupted between the two countries. After multiple terrorist attacks on the Indian parliament, the start of the 21st century was looking very dangerous and uncertain. Finally, we can come to our main story. To analyze our case study, we will be using the lens of liberalism, one of the oldest international relation paradigms. It is often associated with John Locke and the invisible hand of economics. However, it can also be used to interpret the actions of international actors. The key point is the following. It all boils down to cooperation. If states can cooperate with each other, it leads to mutually beneficial exchange. I do something for you, and I get something back. That way everybody wins. Now let's go back to our main story. In 2004, after years of military standoffs and close encounters with nuclear war, Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and Pakistani President Perez Musharraf met during the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation Summit. What a mouthful. They agreed on one thing. Peace talks were needed and it would be done through cricket diplomacy. Thus, the friendship series was born. India would tour in Pakistan in the same year in March and April and pave the road for peace. Before departure, Indian cricket team members met with Prime Minister Vajpayee, who gave skipper Saurav Ganguly a cricket bat on which was inscribed Kel hi nahin, dil bi jitiye, which means not only the game, win the hearts as well. Meanwhile, on the other side of the border, the Pakistani government also emphasized the need to build people-to-people -people relations and acknowledged cricket diplomacy as a way to do that. 
so that more people could see the match, airlines, bus companies, and railways all increased their commutes, and additional millions of people crossed the border on foot. Security was a major concern on India's side. Despite there being no obvious threats to the players, they still sent a three-member delegation to investigate the situation in Pakistan. And they did come to a favorable conclusion. Hindu-Pakistani relations during the match were very positive. To describe a couple of these impressions, as a result of tickets being sold out days prior to the actual match, a 32-year-old from Lahore, Pakistan said, If I can find the ticket thanks to my friends in India, I can't thank them enough. Meanwhile, a Hindu cricket fan said, Today, if I meet a Pakistani, I will invite him home for tea. We can see how rare it just truly was for Pakistanis to be visiting India. Yeah. However, a former famous Indian cricketer, Raju Mukhari, thought that the event was a bit too pretty. He wrote in a newspaper article, was the result of the Indian-Pakistani revival a gift to the guests? He concluded with a new unique prayer, now that the first two matches are over, let us pray that the real cricket begins. Let us hope that from now on, the series is played in the spirit of competitive cricket and not in the spirit of gracious politics. At the end of the day, this resulted in financial improvements for uh, both teams and both countries, especially the Pakistani cricket board, which recovered from near bankruptcy. Coming together brought improvements to everyone, as it should be, supported by everything that liberalism stands for. Despite some criticisms here and there, this run of games helped tear down the walls between India and Pakistan. Since then, there have been many conflicts between the two, as the scars of war sadly run very deep. And yet, in the period of 2004 to 2008, the relations between the citizens of both countries were considered the warmest they have ever been. Both sides toured the other's country, and genuine gestures of goodwill were captured in the lens of the camera forever. We can then conclude that in 2004, the Indian team not only won the game, but also the hearts of the Pakistanis as well. This has been an episode in the series Sports and International Relations. It was made as a part of a Tallinn University Life project. For videos on similar topics, please visit our main channel. Thank you for watching.